Why do most audiophiles hate the center channel? That's what we're going to be talking about in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene Delasala with Audioholics. I want to talk to you guys about why I think most audiophiles hate the center channel. You know, I see this often in the YouTube comments and related videos when I talk about two-channel setup or getting the very best sound out of your home theater for music or for movies. People will comment randomly and say, I don't like using a center channel or I listen to 4.1 4 without a center channel or center channels just ruin the image and you name it. I hear the excuses, people hating on the center channel. And I'm telling you, I'm here to tell you, stop hating on one of the most important speakers in your system. So I want to give you maybe my reasons why I think it's possible that some people just don't like the center channel. And it starts with number one being they chose the wrong center channel. And what do I mean by choosing the wrong center channel? So I want to show you a diagram. We've done many articles about center channels, compromises between each design, pros and cons, placement, you name it. But this is a very crude drawing I did in an article probably 10 or 15 years ago. Just shows you the different kinds of center channel driver topologies. These are just a crude diagram here. Figure one being a basic MTM. This is like, you know, you take two mid ranges and a tweeter, you put the tweeter in the middle. This is really designed to be a vertically oriented speaker, but for convenience, people have been turning them to their side because it's lower profile. It fits on a credenza right under a TV. And in a lot of cases, it's actually, it can be a good speaker, especially the second version of it where it's nested and those two mid ranges are closer together. And that helps prevent some of the lobing problems. But the problem with this kind of design is if you get more than 15, 20 degrees off axis, so if you're sitting to the side, to the right or to the left, you're going to get some lobing effects and you're going to get nulls in the frequency response. And it's usually in the critical mid-band mid -band where those two mid-ranges are sharing uh, frequencies. And then you won't hear the dialogue as well. And then you have to turn it up and you still won't be satisfied. So you, in most cases, if you're, if you're setting up a home theater for multiple seats, multiple rows, you're better off with the next design, which is a WTMW. This is a true three-way center channel. So you've got two base drivers on the sides. You got a vertical stack of a mid-range and a tweeter, very similar to how you would have on your main speakers, right? If you have a three-way speaker, you got a base driver or two, you got a mid-range, you got a tweeter above that. This gives you much better matching with your main speakers. It gives you much better off axis. There's no lobing problem. So you can get good center channel dialogue across all of your seats. That's really the, the better approach to doing a center channel if you really care about having good sound coverage for more than just one seat. And then the worst example of a center channel, and thank God there's almost nobody doing it these days, is when they put a bunch of mid ranges in the middle of the cabinet and then put a tweeter on each side or taking two bookshelf speakers and turning them sideways and using them in parallel. This is just not a good idea at all. The only place you could actually get acceptable sound is right between those tweeters. You have to be equidistant from those tweeters, your ears. Otherwise, you're going to get major high-frequency um, problems. You're going to lose a lot of high-frequency detail. Do not use a center channel like that in any case. Otherwise, you're better off having no center channel at all at that point and just using the phantom center. So I want to go over the next um, possible reason why I think audiophiles hate the center channel. And that would be improper center channel placement. Now, what do I mean by placement? This comes up quite often when I'm doing consultations for people. You know, they, they call me up, they've got good equipment, they've got good speakers, but then I look at the placement of their setup and they put the center channel on the floor, literally on the floor, and then they tilted it up with some door stoppers or whatever. And that is just not conductive of good sound. The problem with that is you're so that speaker is so low to the ground, it's not even at the right listening plane compared to your main speakers. And then you're also listening to it at an off axis uh, spot and you're not gonna get all the details and you're probably blocking a lot of that information, especially if you have multiple rows of seats. So getting that center channel lined up as closely as you can 
to your display and hopefully in line with your main speakers if possible is really the best way to go if you want to get a seamless panning from left center to the right. I'll show you an example. I did a little quick video here in my theater room so you could see what I did. And as you can see, I went with large towers up front. You could see that here. And then I put the center channel behind an acoustically transparent screen and I insulated that whole cavity. So it actually serves as acoustic absorption and it gets that center channel really focused and it's at the right listening plane. My tweeters are lined up with my, my main speakers and I'm using the same kind of speaker. You know, my main speakers have three eight inch mid ranges and then the big AMT. That's exactly what the center channel has. The only difference is I don't have subs there, but the subs are under the main speakers as well as spread out in the rest of the room. So really, if you could get your LCRs ad almost identical in the same kind of speaker, at least with the mids and tweeters, in the same driver orientation vertically and at the same listening plane, you're gonna be much happier whether you're sitting in the middle or if you're sitting across on, on other seats. You're just gonna get much better panning that voice is going to sound like it's coming right from the screen. So if you can't put, do that, if you're not using an acoustically transparent screen, at least put the center channel directly under the, uh, your display and don't stick it inside of a credenza because putting it inside of a credenza is going to change the acoustical properties of that speaker. I've seen people do that. They open up a credenza, they take the door off, and there's this big cavity now and it's all reflective and it's causing all these different impedance issues with how the speaker is presenting itself in the room and it just does not sound good. If you're gonna do that, you need to stuff that cavity with foam and then get that speaker all the way to the edge of the cabinet. That way there's no diffraction from the surface. Sometimes people will put it on top of a credenza and then push it all the way back to the wall and you get the same problem. You get these all this diffraction effect from that piece of wood that it's under and it just does not do well for the speaker. So don't go and get great speakers and then do bad placement because that could really deter you from enjoying uh, the center channel or any of your speakers for that matter. Then the next one is a bad calibration, time alignment or level. And I've again seen people systems where they set up and they got the levels matched but they didn't do anything with the delays. And that could really wreak havoc, especially if you're doing music up mixing and the up mixer is taking that left and right information that is in common and putting it to the center channel, if you don't get the alignment right, you're gonna cause all sorts of combing issues and it's just not gonna sound good. The actual image will shift the focus of it and you won't get that really detailed information from the center that you know the vocals and the speech intelligibility, it just will go out the window. So it's really important. If you're not gonna use the uh, auto setup of your receiver, you know, those actually do a pretty good job with, with time alignment and level. They just don't always do a good job with EQ. But if you're not going to use that and you want to do it the old-fashioned way, my advice to you is to get one of these. And I did a video. It's a laser ruler. It basically, you press the button and you aim it from your listening area to your speaker. You can see the little laser light on it. And it'll tell you a distance in feet or in meters. So get those numbers from your main listening position zero in on the tweeter on each of your speakers and then put those numbers into your AV receiver or processor. And I'm telling you, getting the time alignment right is really critical and the base management as well. But that's another topic for another video, which I have covered. So it is on this channel if you type in base management. So please guys, get good calibration, get the time alignment, get the levels right. Then the next reason would be wrong up mixer settings. Now, this is a pretty big one. I mean, we discovered this many years ago when the Dolby Atmos receivers came on the scene. They, um, they didn't have separate settings for music and cinema mode like ProLogic 2X did, which I loved. I love the upmixes for that very reason. So if, if you went and you put a two-channel source on like music and then you try to upmix it, people would complain like, oh, it sounds terrible because everything's coming out of the center channel. And they were right. So without this feature called center spread, it takes that common information from the main speakers and dumps it into the center channel and it literally extracts it and you lose the imaging of the main speakers. And I've done videos on this. So the, the solution for that is to use center spread on and that'll basically restore the stereo imaging of your main speakers and just give you a little bit of a center fill. 
Now, what about the other up mixers? The DTS X, uh, the DTS Neural X up mixer is really a lost cause, in my opinion, for two channel music up mixing because there's no adjustability of that center channel. And it does the same thing that the Dolby up mixer does when center spread is off. So the only time I would use the DTS Neural X up mixer is if you're is if you're up mixing a two channel movie or TV show. It does a beautiful job for that. Or if you're up mixing 5.1. 5.1, the center spread feature is not even an issue anymore because now you have a discrete center channel. And then the last one would be Oro 3D. And I found that if you don't use the right room size rating, depending on the version of Oro you have, uh, my Storm audio processor has an older version of Oro than what's on the latest Denon or Marantz receivers. And when I set the room size to small, it did the same thing that the Dolby Upmixer does and it extracted all that left and right info and dumped it into the center channel. As soon as when I changed the room size and I got the delay effect right, all that went away and I was getting incredibly good imaging from my main speakers and a good center fill and it was not messing that experience up at all. The last one I want to talk about um, before I give you my final uh, real reason why probably most audiophiles will tell me and below, but this last number five is bad tuning between the main center, mains and center. And this can happen either because you ran an auto EQ setup and it just gave you erroneous results and you went with it and you just got a bad match between your main speakers and your center channel now, or because you didn't compensate for the losses in an acoustically transparent screen. That's another reason. So even though you buy three identical speakers and you put them in the room up front and you set that up, doesn't mean that you don't have to do some EQ to tune it to get that response at the listening area to match better. So definitely look at that. Make sure your auto room correction system is not screwing that up. Disable the EQ and see if you prefer that. And if you're running it with an acoustically transparent screen, you might have to raise that treble up three to six dB, really depending on the type of screen you have and the material you choose. Vinyl screens have more losses than fabric screens. So definitely if you're more concerned about audio, stick with the fabric over the vinyl screens. You'll have less losses and less worries about EQing it. And then the last, what I think most people are going to say below, give me a comment, let me know. But I think just there are some people that are two-channel purists. They prefer to hear just what the main speakers will do in two channel and they take pride in it. And hey, I do that sometimes too. Sometimes I have to remind myself how good my speakers are and that's not I'm not being tricked by having all these other speakers around me. So there's definitely merit to that. And if that's you, give me a comment down below. Give me a thumb up on that. I totally respect your decision on that. But I'm here to tell you that my focus when I'm setting up home theaters or I'm setting up at least from my system, or if I know someone's really into music, I base everything on music, okay? I make sure that the system sounds great for music before I even care about home theater. And when I'm listening to music that I want to upmix, I want to build upon that front stereo soundstage and not take away from it by having the effects channels too loud or having a bad up mixer that's causing everything to dump to the center channel. I want it to be very natural. And if you set it up right and you use the Dolby Surround Up Mixer with center spread on, you should hear very little difference when you're listening to two-channel music and you hear that strong phantom center from your mains. When you turn that Dolby Surround Up Mixer on, it should be very seamless, almost like you didn't do it at all other than you got the effects from your surrounds. You shouldn't say, you shouldn't turn it on and, and all of a sudden say, oh, wow, her voice sounds completely different now. If that's the case, then something's not set up right, whether it's your alignment issue or the placement issue or you chose the wrong type of center channel, one of those reasons. But the bottom line is you should really get seamless results when everything is set up properly and you use the center channel. Now, the big advantage of a center channel and some of these two channel purists don't realize, you're only going to get that strong phantom center, that great imaging characteristic in two channel if you're sitting equidistant from the speakers, it's a very narrow area. As soon as when you get more over to the left or more over to the right, you're going to lose that depending on the dispersion characteristics of your speakers and your room acoustics. You're going to lose that sweet spot. And once you do that, you're not going to hear that dead center image anymore with music that you would hear if you upmixed and you used the Dolby Surround up mixer or you used Oral 3D up mixer. You're going to get some of that restored. So it's really important to have a center channel um, 
in-home theater and if you have multiple seats. And this is especially true if you're watching movies that have a dedicated discrete center channel signal. You want to take advantage of that because, like I said, if you're sitting in your theater and you're setting it up without the center channel, you're only going to get really good dialogue if you're sitting dead center, whereas everybody else to the sides is just not going to hear the dialogue that's coming on the screen as well. So guys, I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it useful. Do you like the center channel? Are you an audiophile that embraces the center channel like I do? Give me the comments down below. Don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audiohawks. I appreciate your support. You get direct access to me if you want to suggest video topics or ask questions. And until next time, my friends, keep listening and keep that center channel on.